What are you doing? I'm just putting the new speakers in for our living room. These are really ugly. They're not ugly. And you've always told me beauty is on the inside. And these things sound beautiful inside this room. I guess I'll give it a listen. Thank you. That's all I can ask. Alright guys, this is the Uglies build, and this one I am really excited about because I really love these speakers. When I was designing these, I designed these completely around home theater. So people ask, well, what's the difference between a normal speaker and a home theater speaker? Main thing is, when I chose these drivers, I chose drivers that I felt could go the full range of sound, blast you with bass, because with home theater, you want that bass all around you. You don't want it just localized in one corner. So I want these to be able to supplement your subwoofers. And then I also want something to be uh, flat and linear to give you the same response back as what the director intended. And so that's what why these were chosen. These W8s, the excursion that they put out is unbelievable. I mean, it really is like having four extra eight inch subwoofers in your living room, which is fantastic. And they do play the full range of sound, which we'll show you a graph later with that. Now I also chose the Peerless Corundum Tweeter. Now the tweeter itself is also a fantastic tweeter. It can be crossed over low enough to help out the W8s, which is very important. And it also has very high power handling and is a extremely flat tweeter, which really rounds off this build. Now we did have to do a double front baffle. Unfortunately, during the move, I lost some footage of the build process. So we'll cut ahead and show you some of the rest of the build. Because we really want this to get a good sound quality and because it has those eights in it that can really hit hard, we want to make sure that we really sturdy up this box. So we're doing that by putting some window braces in. I decided to do four window braces that would brace all four sides, back and front. And in the center I had cut some holes out and rounded those over. What you're going to notice is I'm going to put them in between each woofer to really strengthen those areas where the woofer is going to be at. And I'll put one down a little bit lower, but still keep some space for the port. As you see, we're putting these right around where the woofers are. Uh, that way we really strengthen that area of the box to make sure that uh, we're not gonna get any unwanted resonance. One of the things I find helpful is to put a T-square or any type of square that you have laying around. This is actually a combination square and making sure that it's squared up before you nail it in. Because it's sometimes hard to be able to clamp all the way around this and make sure you're getting a good uh, clamping surface, so I also like to nail these in. Just keep in mind, anywhere you nail, you're gonna have to fill those holes in. All I'm doing now is rounding over the back side of the port. And of course I dropped it. Don't drop yours. When I try to put the port in, I like to space it. So I'll cut some pieces of wood that are supposed to be the size of the port. And I'll just keep those in there while I nail it down. This is actually mattress pad. You can get this really cheap up at Walmart, but you can get like uh, any type of acoustic foam that you want. The most important thing is to use some type of spray glue. I'm using this Gorilla Spray Glue, which works really good. Also, 
Uh, 3M77 works good. I'll leave some links down in the description to some spray glues that I've used that work really good. We're gonna put this all along uh, all of these sides. We're gonna put this lining in there to get rid of any standing waves that might be going on in the cabinet. We're not gonna know exactly where those braces are unless we mark them. So I like to make some marks on either side of the back and on the side of the speaker, as you can see. And that way you can really nail this pretty fast and you know that you're gonna nail right into those braces. And of course, like I said, make sure you clamp. Clamping is important. Don't worry, someday you'll get as fast as me at taking these clamps off. Or you'll just get an editing computer where you can do this at three times the speed. Now I have children, so I'm rounding over the edge. This is really unnecessary when you're doing something like this. This isn't for acoustic benefit, not in this particular case, it's not at least. This is literally just to make sure my kids stay safe around the speakers and don't get hurt. Sometimes your nails don't go all the way in and you just gotta you know, pound them in a little bit. Just wanna make sure to do that because when you start sanding this thing, those aren't down, you're gonna ruin your sandpaper in a hurry. This is gonna be hard to get rid of, but what I like to do is uh, flush trim everything that I can and then after that then go through with some type of uh, putty like glazing putty or in this particular case I use a Bondo. Uh, the more Bondo you use the more sanding you're going to do but it does get rid of those seams if you don't want them. Now keep in mind these are called the uglies for a reason. I wanted to uh, come up with a speaker that sounds so good that it doesn't matter how ugly you build these. I, I notice that a lot of people don't get into this hobby because they're afraid of what it's going to look like. Don't worry about what it looks like. The most important thing is what it sounds like. And that's what we're going to kind of hopefully show you now is that it doesn't matter necessarily what it looks like. Now here all we're doing is cutting out the port. What I like to do is just drill a little hole in there and then just flush trim it out. I'm also going to make sure that I round this over just so I don't have to worry about any type of uh, port noise coming out of this. Honestly, you shouldn't have to worry about this. This particular woofers are designed really well to not have to worry about that at all. see with painting I just used a paintbrush once again these are supposed to not be the most beautiful speakers in the world they're supposed to just sound really really good and they really do um, we, I took a long time to design the crossover the crossover I did many different iterations of and uh, I think that's important to do if you want these to sound great now what you'll notice is that I like to mark where all the components are gonna go and I'll drill through both of the uh, boards, the crossover boards at the same time. That way uh, we know all the holes are going to be in the exact same spot. So most people are going to ask me what do I think of these. Man, I have listened to these for a while now just to make sure that they sounded good and they're incredible. I decided to power these with just my home theater receiver. I did first start with ice power then I switched over to the uh, 
home theater receiver. They are 8 ohm, so you can use a home theater receiver on these. And I mean, it's it's just amazing how much bass you can get out of them. In fact, I still am not even using a subwoofer with them. In fact, this is the first set of speakers that I can really think of that I've hooked up to Odyssey, and it automatically found it as a full range large tower speaker. Most tower speakers it wants to cross over by at least 80 hertz. So this was a really great surprise. Now I do turn Odyssey EQ on because I don't listen to a lot of things at reference level because I have kids that are sleeping. And that just makes sure that I still get the bass that I want at lower levels. So here's some of the frequency response. Uh, you can see it's a very flat linear and that's really just the, the tweeter, it's just a linear response in general. One of the things that really surprised me though was when I got these in home, I couldn't believe that I was actually getting 20 hertz in room. It's crazy that I was able to get that. Now that is a negative 10, but still at negative 10 you're down at to 20 hertz. Now I want you to take a look at these woofers man. This is from the beginning of Live, Die, and Repeat where the woofers go extremely low. These handled it extremely well and you could just feel the bass, which a lot of speakers have a really hard time recreating that scene. Overall, I've been very happy with these and so has my wife, but don't take my word for it. Let's see what she says at the end. So you've listened to them. Can we keep them in the living room? For now. <laughs>